transporter. So that's checking in on the transporter. Check in. We don't live <laughs> We live with our meats. <laughs> Piece of cardboard uh -huh. to hold the window up. Yeah. My foreman kept pulling me down the line, pulling me down the line. Yeah. And that was at the end of the line. You had to have like probably 30 years seniority. Yeah. To even think about working. Yeah. That far down the line. Okay. So my foreman takes me from the second floor. Uh -huh. And every time I get out of that car, and people are like crying. Yeah. And walking off the job. Uh -huh. And I want to cry. Yeah. I want to walk out the job. Uh -huh. But, but you have to keep working. Every yeah. time I get out of that car, yeah. and my foreman, I really liked him. He was always yeah. fair to me. His name was Larry Bridges. Uh -huh. And I get out of the car, uh -huh. and he called me babe. Yeah. I don't think it was like a weird thing. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been a weird thing, but I don't think. You don't it think was. so? I no. hope it was. Uh -huh. He's just a real nice guy. Yeah. So every time I get out of the car, he'd say. Hey, babe, I need you to come down here, and, yeah. you know, uh -huh. and I'm like trying to put stuff on that I had no earthly idea what I was doing. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> I didn't even have enough seniority to walk through that area, much yeah. less work in that area, you know. And uh, the last thing I remember putting on was the door glass on the driver's door yeah. it was not there. And I guess the guy, had, woman had, you know, left the job. And uh -huh. So Larry's like, put this wind in, babe. Yeah. And it's got that metal, what, what do you call that metal thing that the window sits like on? Like a scissor. Channel. Channel. Yeah, it's like a scissor thing. Mm -hmm. So I'm like fumbling around, <laughs> to put that thing in, and there was no door skin on it whatsoever. And I'm like, I look up at Larry, I'm like, <laughs> I don't know how to put this thing in. Yeah. yeah, and they've never done it. Uh -huh. He says, this car has to look good and it has to start up. Yeah. Because the president of General Motors, yeah. uh, Smith, what was his name? And he had plans to get in that car yeah. and drive it off the end of the line. Yeah. You know, a photo. Yeah. So Larry, he wasn't allowed to touch anything, being a foreman. But he, he hands me a piece of cardboard. He said, <laughs> he said, stick it in with this piece of cardboard. Yeah. I'm sitting in there, <laughs> folding that cardboard yeah. like, you know, in a little square, <laughs> holding the window up yeah. with my elbow, sticking uh, it down in there yeah. to make it look good. Oh, yeah. The window looked really good. That car had to look good. But you did follow it down the assembly line and uh, to the last resting spot before it was off. Right. I was I was in it, sticking cardboard in it, yeah. doing all kinds of other little things. Mm -hmm. I was smart enough, you know, to know how to hook up a battery, sure, put sure. batteries in, and all this kind of stuff. So, so this is Don Johnson. Um, he worked at Norwood for many years, and he had a part in the very last Camaro off the assembly line before the plant closed. And um, I'm getting to know Don fairly well through some friends of mine, Alex and Drew Money, that's doing a documentary. So check out the documentary at norwoodlegends.com. It is amazing. Um, so we're going to go back over here and listen to what Don's saying. But I want to let all my friends back home know who we're talking to. Now, I knew a lot of people. I knew more people than some people being an ARO because I would yeah. get pulled and land out to different departments. You yeah. know. I never knew that guy, but he he was from someplace way down in coal country, Kentucky. Okay. And uh, after the plane closed down, he went back down to, to Kentucky. Uh -huh. Ended up in uh, the penitentiary for he something. Did? Yeah. No kidding. So life was rough after after you, after you lose that job. I, think, I don't know what his story was, I but think, he ended up in jail, yeah. in prison. Uh -huh. So he knew a, a pastor. Bus. The car, yeah, the yeah. car, that motor the out. car That's ended right. up the next to yeah. this Baptist preacher's house. The so the car sat there for yeah. years, probably yeah. covered up. Y'all know what kudzu is? You don't know what kudzu is? Uh -huh. I'll come down Tennessee. I'll show yeah. you what kudzu is. <laughs> it's 
it's like this big leafy weed and they'll, yeah. they'll grow up over the side of your house yeah grow up over your car over yeah. your mailbox really if no you kidding. stand there long enough they'll grow up over you yeah. <laughs> so i think that car was finally covered in weeds and yeah. kudzu and all kinds of weird stuff well uh, is it philip philip Morris that owns it now he, he had like, to buy the church van too to get the yeah, water yeah that's yeah. A, the baptist preacher yeah. where that car was dumped out next to his yeah. house he pulled the had somebody pull yeah. the motor out and put it in a church van yeah to keep the church van on the road yeah oh so this guy <laughs> this guy was lucky enough to find the yeah the car uh -huh. and yeah like like he said yeah. he had to the church van to yeah. get the motor yeah but I, i've seen that on on facebook and it's totally beautifully oh, it's all, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, it's something else. We, yeah. it, in the in the documentary that, uh, well, in the first release, I think it's the, called the director's cut that Drew and Alex did. Yeah. They have an interview with For uh, Philip Morris on that car, and I'm not sure what show he presented it at, but he had it on an he had an assembly line and everything as if it's coming down. Oh, and wow. uh, yeah, yeah, I'm surprised you haven't seen it. I'm no. I, 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 all right. Well, it's it's out there on YouTube, I'm sure, or someplace, some streaming video that you could probably look at. I, but I, I took that photo myself. That's awesome. That's why I so, can't find myself in it. So, <laughs> what year? What what do you remember the date and the year that was? That was 1987. I it was 87. Oh man! Like late August or in the summertime or? What the day is? Yeah. That they shut down Norwood. <clears throat> that I do something. remember it. That's that is that's that's pretty impressive. So when that picture was taken, you know, yeah, I knew my I knew my life had changed. Sure, sure, I and, remember. Uh, yeah, that was the best, talking about that. That was the best job I ever had. Yeah, I mean, you know, benefits. you probably had a lot of variety yeah, being a relief right. operator, right? I mean, as far as your day to day, you, did you come in and it was like, here's where you're going to be, or were you there for, on a job for a long time before? I would you check were... in with with my foreman. They uh -huh. had little little office cubicle things. Yeah. And I would go in and check with my foreman, Larry, Larry Bridges, and uh, he would either put me on a job, send me to a job in our department. Okay. If all the AROs showed up, I think he had like maybe five AROs. Okay. If they all showed up, which is sometimes rare, <laughs> even for Norwood. Oh, really? For yeah. the absentee relief uh -huh. operator not to show up himself. Yeah. Uh, that happened really, but uh, if all the AR ARO showed up, he would lend me out okay. to other departments. So theoretically, th theoretically, I could have ended up any mm. anywhere mm. in at least trim. Okay. So I knew all the there was like 40 jobs in hard trim. Mm -hmm. The department I worked for with Larry Bridges. Okay. There was another hard trim that had probably 40. Jobs, okay. Give or take a few, yeah. and I knew about half of those jobs. Okay. All in all, I I knew probably about 60 assembly jobs wow. for the F body. Yeah, for the F body yeah. Camaro Firebird. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. And I would have friends, you know, that would buy a Camaro or Firebird. Yeah, they'd call me up like, Hey Johnson, you working Saturday? No. Can you come over and work on my my car? Uh huh. Uh -huh. Like, yeah. Man, I'm not a mechanic. Right. It's like. <laughs> right. But I'm sure you did get a call because they probably thought, well, he works the assembly line. He works so much. And sometimes He's I could be, help him yeah, out and right. sometimes not. Yeah, sure. And they didn't really understand that. They're like, yeah. well, don't you build these things? I'm uh -huh. like, yeah, but when it's coming down the line, right. is way different than sure. climbing sure. Oh, sure. under your car Absolutely. in the driveway. Absolutely. Jacking your car up mm -hmm. and looking at it, you know. Absolutely. Yep. Ground up from, you know, laying on the ground, mm -hmm. you know. I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, this is... Uh, uh, right. The mechanic. Right. What was what was your favorite job? What what would you recall as like a favorite job on these cars? Probably an easier job, right? What was probably the yeah. easiest job? See, that was or one, a simple day. Maybe that was one good thing about. I was I was late, low seniority. Okay. Yes. Because yeah, I job. hired in in '87. Right. They they hadn't really hired anybody since World War II. Wow. So I was I was low seniority. Mm -hmm. So every that time the layoff came yeah. up, mm -hmm. you know, I was involved in it. Right. You know, last hired first. Yeah. Laid off. Right. Hired. Right. And uh, 
So being low seniority, I didn't have enough seniority to hold a good, good job. Okay. Oh, they had okay. some really nice, easy, good job. Where you could <laughs> probably wear a suit and die and right. go in there. Right. And then they had some jobs, some tough jobs. Rough. Yeah. Yeah, you had mentioned something about like that. Like the in, inside air conditioner. That was uh -huh. one I really dreaded. Oh, yeah. Because you'd, uh, you'd have to lay on your... Of course, there was no seats in the car. Mm -hmm. The seats... You know, we're putting oh, what right, they call the right. cushion. It was just the body. So probably, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Now, to my area, it would have the bed and mm -hmm. carpet, mm -hmm. and all the wiring harnesses underneath. Right. All that would be done. Right. But I'd, I'd I'd have to lay on my stomach while the car is moving down the line. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Hold the air conditioner or the heater up. Yeah. You know, with my left yeah. arm. Yeah. Hold it in place. Yeah. Make sure. I can't remember. There was like two or three hoses, mm -hmm. you know, that you couldn't crimp. Mm -hmm. If you wasn't careful, you could crimp all that, you know, the hoses, yeah. then yeah. the repairman would have to take it off and redo it. Uh -huh. So there was like, you know, like two or three things you had, the wires you had to clip together. Yeah. You had to make you sure you had to hold that while you were doing the other hand. And, <laughs> oh, my <laughs> <It> goodness. Was, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was like <laughs> strenuous. <laughs> That's and uh, then you had to shoot, you know, like four or five screws mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. to it. Yeah. Not crimping the hoses. So you were there during the transition of the second generation model into the third generation, right? So no. You were there from 78 to... 78. Okay, so yeah, you would have been there during the second generation, like this car. And into, oh, yeah, into yeah. this car here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's like that car over there. No, yeah, that, that, that would have been the first, probably to you, the first one that yeah. was coming in. I would have been in the body shop, yeah, okay. running spot welders. Right. Oh, really? Yeah. Was, yeah. I bet sparks are flying oh, and stuff. The, the metal parts here. Uh huh. And there's a sealant that you have to, you have to, you know, squirt in there. Yeah. You know, with this this gun. Uh huh. And then when you put the spot welder on it. There's spot welds, I mean. Yes, all throughout hundreds the Hundreds of them. Unibody. Hundreds of them. Sure. And uh, <laughs> that sealant, <laughs> if there was too much in there, mm -hmm. would ooze out. And then when you hit that with the spot welder, <laughs> it was like, it would shoot from here and, and hit no the top kidding. top of that house over there. Oh, my goodness. Unless your face or something got in, <laughs> right. got in the way. Get out of the way. Here and it my goes. Face, my face. As you can tell, like I wasn't in the body shop then, yeah. so my beard doesn't look as bad. Yeah. When I was in the body shop, my beard probably had some had a lot of uh, burn. Oh burn sure, holes in it. sure. I would buy like dollar T-shirts at, at Goodwill. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, why would why wear good good clothes? clothes? Exactly. You wear a T-shirt two or three days mm -hmm. in the body shop. Oh, in the you body know. shop, you're probably getting just all yeah. yeah stuff so like you know, your T-shirt after two or three days, you just <laughs> throw it away. <laughs> Right. Get a different shirt. Yeah. What did the uh, GMAD? What was the AD? General Motors Assembly Division yeah. is what that stood for. And I had no idea. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the very few things I have left over is that mm -hmm. patch. Yeah. I've got that.